Audacity Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Last week, we saw Manchester University win the first of the semi-finals of this year's championship. Tonight, we'll find out who they'll be playing in the final. University College London are through to this stage, having beaten two Cambridge colleges, Pembroke and Girton, and then York University in the quarter-finals when they demonstrated a knowledge of the Eurovision Song Contest, the films of Stanley Kubrick, and the courses of flatulence. Let's meet them again. Hello, my name's Matthew Halson. I'm from Portishead in North Somerset, and I'm reading East European History. Hi, my name's Alan Dwyer. I'm from Coleraine in County Derry, and I'm studying medicine. And their captain. Hi, I'm Joe Murray. I'm from London. I'm studying English. Hi, I'm James Dosa from Northwich in Cheshire, and I'm doing a PhD in the politics of archaeology. Now, Warwick University have beaten Emmanuel College, Cambridge, the University of East Anglia, and Aberystwyth to make it through to this stage. Last time, they made a strong start and proved they know their way around the republics of Central Asia, but psychology left them rather baffled. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Rory Gill. I'm from London, and I'm studying English and Italian literature. Hi, I'm Harold Weiber. I'm from Woodford Green in London. I'm studying economics. And their captain. Hi, I'm Daisy Christodoulou. I'm from London and I'm studying English literature. Hi, I'm Prakash Rattel. I'm from Leicester and I study a PhD in chemistry. <laughs> Too tedious to recite the rules, just let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. The sitter symbolised innocence or she was pregnant. According to Freud, the artist was erotically attracted to his own mother, while for others, he was executing a self-portrait in drag. These are among the many explanations offered for the cause of which enigmatic... Uh, Warren Christodoulou. The Mona Lisa. Yes, OK, it's, the, it's her facial expression I was looking for. It's Mona Lisa's smile. So you get a set of bonuses, Warwick. They are on an English poet. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Man never is, but always to be blessed. Which poet wrote these words in his 1733 work, An Essay on Man? Alexander Pope. Correct. What is the title of Pope's mock heroic satire on dullness, which prophesies the triumph of dullness, the spread of indolence and corruption, and the consummation of all in the restoration of night and chaos? Maybe he wrote it the Dunciad. The Dunciad. Correct. Most of the moons of Uranus are named after characters from Shakespeare, but two, Belinda and Umbriel, are named from which work by Pope? The Rape of the Lock. It is The Rape of the Lock. <laughs> First come I. My name is Joet. There's no knowledge, but I know it. I am master of this college. What I don't know isn't knowledge. These lines by H.C. Beeching refer to the English classicist Benjamin Joet, regarded as one of the greatest scholars of the 19th century and elected master in ah. 18... Warwick Christodoulou. Balliol. Balliol is right, yes. Your bonuses, Warwick, are on like-sounding words. Used in the Middle Ages, especially on prepared panels, what painting method used finely ground pigment mixed with a solidifying base such as albumen, fig sap, or thin glue? Alabaster? Alabaster? Yeah. Or fresco? Fresco? No, it's tempera. Oh, tempera omore is a phrase yes. often used to bewail the de degeneracy of the present day. Is a citation of which Roman orator of the first century BC? Cicero. Yep. Cicero. Correct. Consisting of seafood or vegetables fried in light batter. The dish known as tempura originated in Portugal but is now associated with which Asian country? Yeah. Japan. Yeah. Uh, Japan. Correct. Ten points for this starter question. The novels of the mother include The Peacock Garden and Baumgarter's Bombay and of the daughter, Hullabaloo in the Guava ah. Orchard. Warwick Christodoulou. Desai. Yes, I, but don't hesitate next time. I'll give you that, though. Right, here are your bonuses. They're on biblical relatives. As she was old and childless, Sarah persuaded her husband Abraham to take which Egyptian slave as his wife, a woman who would eventually bear him Ishmael? Um, oh. Rachel. Oh, I can't believe it. It's not Rachel, it's Hagar, I think. Yeah. Hagar. Correct. Who was both uncle and father-in-law to Jacob because he was brother of Jacob's mother, Rebecca, and tricked Jacob into marrying his elder daughter, Leah? The 
No, it's Laban. The Midianite priest variously referred to as Reruel, Jethro, or Hobab became the father-in-law of which biblical character who married the priest's daughter, Zipporah? Saul? Saul. Saul. No, it's Moses. Ten points for this. In astronomy, denoting the point at which a heavenly body in the Earth's orbit is furthest from the Earth, what six-letter word is used in a general sense to mean the ah. highest... Warwick Patel. Apogee. Apogee is right. <laughs> Your bonuses, Warwick, are on hope. According to some accounts, what less complimentary name did Bartolomeu Diaz give to Cabo de la Buena Esperanza, or Cape of Good Hope, when he first rounded it in 1488? Cape of Storms. Cape of Storms. Cape of Storms. Correct. Which country includes among its provinces the Provincia de Ultima Esperanza and the Provincia de Magellanes? Argentina? Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Argentina. Argentina. No, it's Chile. Esperanza is the name given to an island in the French novelist Michel Tournier's 1967 retelling of which work of 1719? Robinson Crusoe. I thought Crusoe. Correct. Ten points for this starter question. Chintz, almost, abhors, ghosty, effort, and billow are six letter words sharing what specific feature in terms of the letters they contain? Warwick Gill. Do they all follow in alphabetical order? Yes, they do. <laughs> Your bonuses, Warwick, are on quarks. Quarks are the constituents of protons and neutrons and, more generally, of what class of heavy subatomic particles which includes baryons and mesons? What do you think? Um, the, the one is lepton. Lepton. Lepton is a lepton, but the other one... Um, yeah. uh, oh, no, not neutrons. Uh, no, that's no, no, a type of lepton. Um, uh, electrons are leptons, but what are protons and... Um, Let's have an answer. Lepton. 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 No, it's hadrons. The name taken from the line three quarks for Mr. Mark in James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake was applied to these particles by which U.S. physicist? Murray Gellman. I think Murray Gellman. Okay. Uh, Murray Gellman. Correct. A proton is formed of two up quarks and a down quark. What combination makes a neutron? Um, is it two down, uh, down quarks and up quarks? Two down quarks and up quarks. Uh, uh, two down quarks and up quarks. That's correct. Right, we're going to take our picture around now. Perhaps you'll get going with this one, UCL. Your picture starter is a painting. Ten points, if you can tell me the name of the artist. Warwick Christodoulou. Picasso. It is Pablo Picasso. <laughs> Acrobat and young Harlequin. So, following on from that, uh, picture bonus is three more works of art depicting Harlequins. Five points for each artist you can name. Here's the first. What's that Harlequin? Oh, yeah. Um, what we name the artist? Yeah. The artist, yeah. Oh, yeah. Magritte. Magritte? Yeah, yeah. Magritte? No, that is Cezanne. Secondly. Oh. Um, oh, I can't see the signature. I, I don't know. Um, Magritte? Do you want to say Magritte again? Or, yeah. or what? Yeah. Yeah. Magritte. No, that's Doofy, and finally. Oh. <laughs> or, or not. Oh. What do you reckon? Possibly, uh, it's, it's not Darwin, is it? Any other ideas? Magritte? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Magritte. No, that's Chagall. <laughs> Ten points for this starter question. What was the highest official title of honour in the Ottoman Empire, a name possibly of Persian origins? Ah, that Warwick Christodoulou. Mufti. No, you lose five points. That was used for soldiers in the Turkish Republic until 1934. UCL Housen. Is that Janissary? Uh, no, Janissaries were... Uh, conscripts from other face, I think. No, it's a pasha I was looking for, so we'll take another starter question now. What term was coined in the 1950s by French commentators to distinguish the developing countries from the capitalist and communist blocs? Ah, like Christodoulou. Less economically developed countries. No, you lose five points. Defining a concept which the writer Shiva Naipaul has described as an artificial construction of the West, an ideological empire on which the sun is always setting. UCL Dosa. The third world. The third world is right, yes. <laughs> Better ground to catch up, but you might do it. Your bonuses are on literature. A successful womanizer, Uncle Oswald, is the title character of a 1979 novel by which author? Uh, you don't know, sorry. Oh, that's by Roald Dahl. Abide by the rule of threes. Either you see a woman three times in quick succession and then never again, or you maintain relations, but make sure the rendezvous are at least three weeks apart. In which novel by Milan Kundera does this advice appear? 
The unbearable likeness of being. Correct. A detailed account of Amorous Adventures based on an award-winning weblog.